And I'm reading from the NIV version. All right. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore, therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been, set, has been freed from sin. Now if we died from Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was, no, since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer had mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to, to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. And offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master, because you are not under law, but under grace. Amen. Amen. And our focus scriptures this will, become, will be verses 10 through 13, which reads, The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. When Jesus died on the, died on the cross, he died completely to sin. Sin no longer had any had any influence on him, and the life he lived was a life that was completely for God. Amen. So, as saved Christians, we should see ourselves as dead to sin, but alive to God. Yes. We should we should not let sin rule over our life, and we should not give in to our fleshly desires. Amen. Now, I know that's hard to do sometimes, because the devil will make it seem like doing the things of your flesh is really fun, or it'll make you feel good, well. or make you think it's something that you just can't do. All right, all right. But when you do these things, in reality, all you're doing is killing yourself. How are you killing yourself? Go to Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. All right. What is the scripture saying? It's saying that if you give in to sin, let sin rule over your life. Do everything that your flesh wants you to, you will die. But if you live a life, if you live your life for God, you will have eternal life in his son, Jesus Christ. How do you live a life for God? You stay in his word, study it day and night, and meditate on it. If you do, if you do that, the world will start to get in your heart, and you'll be able to quote all those scriptures and tell where they are like the pastor. All right, right Alex. Right. That's right. Then you pray and you communicate with God each and every day. Be obedient to the thing God's tell you, and don't talk back to God and say, "God, I really don't want to help Minister Sally with the food giveaway." If God said do it, then do it. All right. Also, instead of going to the club on Saturday night. Doing something with that man or woman that you know you ain't got no business. <laughs> Why don't you stay home and read the Bible for a change? Spend some time with another brother or a sister from the church or just talk to God. Amen. Amen. Once we became saved and accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we then died to sin. Meaning that sin should no longer rule, have Sins should no longer have any rule, any authority, or any power over you whatsoever. You should be able to look sin right in the face and say, no, you have no power over me. I am a child of God, and I will not do anything that isn't pleasing or acceptable in his sight. And you have to mean it when you say it, because if you don't, the sin is just going to keep coming back to your head until you eventually give in. 
So you have to tell Satan to get behind you, get out of your head, for he does not belong there. Amen. Quoting a scripture or saying a prayer always helps too. All right. Amen. Come on. Come on. So as a saved Christian, someone who has accepted Jesus, since sin has no authority or power over you, let's not pay attention to it at, to sin at all and live our lives completely for God. And if you do that and obey him, learn the things of him by reading the Bible, communicating to him, praising and worshiping him from the very bottom of your souls, you will have a place in the kingdom of heaven. Amen, wow. amen. All right. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Thank you, God. Yes. 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 Now, I also write gospel poetry. Great. And I wrote a poem that goes along with this message. I called it A Breakup with Sin. Right. Hey Sin, how's it going? Do you have a minute? Because we need to talk. Now, every word that I'm about to say, you're going to pay close attention and listen. Sin, you won't win. Did you hear me? Did you really? Wait, let me repeat myself so you can understand me clearly. Sin, you can't, you won't, and never will win. See, you got to understand that I'm a child of God and everything I do is going to be acceptable to him. So you and me, that ain't going to work. Mm. So you can pack your bags and leave. You don't right. belong to me and I don't belong to you. See, the things you do, I don't. And the things I do, you don't. So why are you trying to come on to me and influence me to do the things of you when clearly and honestly, I really don't want to do that? As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, to me you're dead, so get out of my head. See, this thing we used to have is done, me and you, it's over. Come on. See, I'm a child of God and the life I live is a life for him. He's my king, my ruler and my master, not you. All right. You no longer have power nor reign over me because in reality I reign over you. So when I tell you to pack your bags and leave, don't try to tell me how things used to be. Just right. get out All right. All right. and don't come back. Go somewhere else to have some fun because me and you are done. Oh